Okay, quick on the heels of the last one. I'm here. I'm having a smoke. You might hear the crackle of the fireplace in the background. I apologize. Also the birds. Lots of birds today. Holy Christ. Okay, so part two of how to avoid writer's block and finish your friggin' novel. Part one, I told you my Michael Weber, Michael John Weber's patented screenplay mixed with novel theory. That theory, in short, being you write all the dialogue first, then you write all the Rileys second, and then you write the descriptive establishing and re-establishing paragraphs last. Oh, and then you edit, of course. But, so now, there's another trick that I use in order to help write my... Uh, actually, no, let me get to this. The reason reason why I write this way, this first step of dialogue first, Riley second, and paragraph establishing paragraphs third, is... You know, if you're writing a novel linearly, like from word one to word 100,000 and you're in straight through and trying to get it all perfect <laughs> while you're doing it. First of all, it sounds maddening. It's stressing me out just talking about it. But say you're on chapter three and your main character, Billy, is on his way somewhere, but you're not really sure where he's on his way to. Or you're not sure what's going to happen to him there. You didn't really think about it. Or maybe you're just not in the mood to write about Billy today. Maybe his voice isn't in your head. Maybe, you know, etc. There's a thousand reasons. And there's your writer's block. Okay, but when you write it like this, when you write all the dialogue first, A, that's fast. It's easy. But then, you know what? Say you wake up today and you're not writing the right dialogue. So then you go write Riley's. And if you don't feel in the mood to do that or it's just not coming out, go write those big flowery descriptive paragraphs that set the stage. And if you're sick of doing that, go write new dialogue. And so on and so on. So now you 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 have essentially three jobs to do, three tasks, and depending on the day, you can pick up which task suits you uh, and your mood and your creative level that day. But again, if you're writing a novel the old-fashioned way, one word to the other, A to B to Z, um, if you're you, you're you're stuck at the last word you wrote. If you don't know what to write or you just don't want to write anymore, you're stuck at that very last word. You, you have nothing else to write. Which then leads me into this part two. <laughs> One of the main things that I do is I don't write in a line. Don't write in a straight line. Now, I figured this out on my own just because I'm a weirdo. Uh, and what I mean by this is I write chapter... 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15, all at once, to be honest with you. I just put the ideas on, like, okay, so I got a chapter, and in chapter A, A goes to uh, to the mall. And I got another chapter I want N to eat ice cream. <laughs> and I got another chapter that, and I do that, I set up about 12 chapters of things I know I want to see and know will be in the novel. It doesn't matter where in the storyline they occur chronologically. These are just the ideas. Uh, and we'll put uh, J fights a demon and, I don't know, K gets mad at M. And these are all just chapter ideas. I don't know what order they go in and I don't care. So... Wow, how am I going to explain this? <laughs> so when you're writing like that, chapter, it just disparate chapters here and there. Like, and I don't even number the chapters. I, I get a vague sensation of where in the plot line they arrive. But no, I don't really care. I just, ha and then what happens is, again, like I said about the, the writer's block thing, in this case, say if I don't want to write about A going to the mall today, and that's just not on my brain, then I'll go write about N, eating ice cream. And if I can't hear N's voice today for some reason, then I go write about J and whatever chapter she's doing. And then I go write about K, etc, etc. Now, to make me sound like less a crazy person, if you go and listen, go watch the movie Back to the Future with the audio director's commentary turned on. And you listen to Bob Zemeckis talk about how they actually do this. They say, look, in Back to the Future, we know we want a scene where Marty McFly invents rock and roll. So they write that down on a 3x5 card and you pin it up on the wall. I literally do this too. Pin cards on the wall. So you've got a card in the wall that says Marty McFly invents rock and roll. Well, in order to get to that point, you have to establish that Marty likes and knows how to play rock and roll. 
So you write that on another card. Show Marty playing guitar. And then you pin that on the wall in some chronological order that makes it make sense. And of course, when you watch Back to the Future, one of the very first things we see and are established is that Marty likes rock and roll and knows how to play guitar. And so on and so on. And so you just keep doing that. Keep doing that and writing in this. It's sort of a non-linear way. I know Marty McFly is going to do something. But before that, he's going to have to do something to, you know, sort of set up payoff. And your story just starts writing itself at that point. Now, if that doesn't help either, <laughs> and this one's going to be even more ridiculous, go watch the movie Dodgeball with the secret hidden director's commentary turned on. And I know listening to director commentary maybe sounds ridiculous, but you get a lot of tips about how to write stories off of these people. So dang. Okay, so what's his name? Rawson Marshall Thurber, I believe his name is, the director of the movie Dodgeball. He talks about this. He says a university professor of his told him that 90% of all novels and screenplays and everything like that gets written in a line. Gets written from word one to word two to word three all the way through to the end. 10% of the time stories aren't written in a line they're written chapter three gets written first then chapter 12 and then chapter one and then chapter 30 and then we fill in six seven eight and then we go to 42 that's 10 percent of how and that's apparently how rawson marshall thurber the director deals with his projects obviously bob zemeckis from uh back to the future is using somewhat similar theory and personally i Though I stumbled a lot upon it myself, and now I'm thankful that other people do it, I seem to be in that 10%. I don't start at chapter 1, and go to chapter 2, and chapter 3, and chapter 4. I do not do that. I just, I don't even number the chapters until the novel's done. Uh, sometimes i got to cut and paste whole chapters just to put them where they should be, <laughs> right? The point of the fact, of the matter is that they get done. And again, it's that if I don't want to write about n character A today, and I don't hear his voice, or I'm just bored, or sick of it, or whatever, then I go write about character N, or character J, or character K. So if that writer's block comes up, where you don't want to write the scene, the character, the whatever, then you go write somebody else, and there's and your writer's block's gone. And if you don't want to write person two, you go write person three. And if you don't want to write per person four, you go, etc. I don't know how many characters you got in your novel, but dang, I got enough, I got an ensemble cast, uh, I, I can't squeeze all of their shit in and I can't write it fast enough. So, take a deep breath, Michael. <laughs> so here's part two's theory. Try this out. Try not starting at Once Upon a Time and writing straight through to And Happily Ever After. Write, start in the middle, start in the beginning, write chapters just as they come to you. And once you finish these, and again, write the dialogue first, write the Riley second, write the exposition third, once you are complete, then in the editing process is when you can go and make all this make sense. You can weave all. It's like making a quilt. When you knit a quilt, you knit a whole bunch of patches together, and then you knit those patches together, <laughs> right? You don't, you don't start at one corner and just weave your way through all the way to the opposite corner. You create a whole bunch of small packets, pack, patches, sorry, and then you weave and sew those patches together. So likewise in the story, write a whole bunch of chapters. And then after you have the chapters, you fit them out. And then what I noticed too is like, because I can, some people are going to ask, well, how do you know if you're writing chapter three, how do you know what happened in chapter two that leads up to what happened in three? And the way you do that is by writing chapter three. You know, if there, are, if, if you just start writing in the middle of the story that they're in, I don't know, the Arctic, well, it obviously makes sense that they had to get there. Just like how Marty McFly invents rock and roll, well, obviously he needs to know how to play rock and roll. But if your first idea is the, him playing the rock and roll, of course it makes sense. You've got to write an earlier chapter. And this is what I find happens. Once I write chapter 9, then it's like, well, I guess I'm going to have to write chapter 8 and I'm going to include this. And then that'll lead to chapter 13, which will bring us to, you know, and it'll all, trust yourself, it'll link together. It really will. <laughs> it really will. Okay, so I'm at 9 minutes, 10 I'm going to try to stop it. One last conclusion, because I like to hear the sound of my own voice, is write, the, write dialogue first, Riley second, exposing descriptive paragraphs last, and then don't try to not write your story in a straight line. 
and that if you got five chapters on the go all at once no problem because if you don't want to write one of them today you can write something else and again i'm not this isn't a hint on how to be successful it's how to finish your damn friggin novel and there's more there's going to be a part three and i'll ramble excessively so have fun with that <laughs> here it goes okay i'll see you